breeding. Let's start. This will be our breeding tank. Nothing fancy, I just want a clear tank to be able to video shoot the breeding process. I'm using aged water of about a week old. She's so ready to breed. I can say by the vertical stripes in her body, this is a body language that she's ready to make. I've placed their tanks side by side since yesterday. This is to introduce them and get acquainted. By the looks of them, they're really eager to breed. Let's transfer the male beta in the tank and leave him there for 30 minutes or so. It's been 30 minutes. Time to add the female in the tank. But we will enclose her in a cut plastic bottle so the male can see her but cannot harm her. Look, he's eager to meet her, circling around and looking for an entrance to her enclosure. We will keep it this way until the male builds a nest. It's day two of our breeding. Look at the male's bubble nest. I think we should release the female now. Again, this is the bubble nest. It's pretty big. The male normally attacks the female until she submits to him. When that happens, the mating embrace begins. Look at them, they're right under the nest. <laughs> there are, of course, few failed embrace attempts. Wait for it. There you have it, a successful embrace. They will do several embraces until they have fertilized hundreds of eggs. Look at the female's body. The vertical lines are very vivid. It's the way of communication that she's ready to release eggs. When the male sees that, he knows what to do. These are the eggs falling, milky white in color. He will carefully pick them up one by one, ensuring not to miss a single egg. He then delivers them to the nest. The male will constantly rebuild the nest, replacing and adding bubbles to ensure the eggs keep afloat. The male sends the female away, and now she's in the opposite part of the tank. This is our time to remove her. This is important so she will be safe from possible attacks from the male. Most males attack female to protect their eggs because females are known to be egg eaters. Yes, they eat their own eggs. This male will tirelessly attend to their eggs until they hatch, constantly checking the eggs every now and then. Another important step for us is to cover the tank. If we don't cover, the male might freak out for some commotions and might end up eating the eggs. To avoid that, we cover the tank. We're back, and today is day three. Yesterday, our bettas laid eggs, so basically the eggs are a day old today. Can you see tiny black dots inside the eggs? Those are actually their eyes forming. It's day four today, and the eggs are finally hatched. Have a closer look at those cute and tiny little fries. They can't swim yet, they need the help of their father. He will constantly pick up the fries from the floor and bring them back to the nest. No feeding yet at the stage. Today is day five. Our fries are one day old today from hatch. They can swim on their own without the help of their father. They're now free swimmers. Time to remove the male and feed him with some nutritious live food. Prepare baby brine shrimp today so they will hatch tomorrow. Hello guys, today is day seven. Our fries are three days old from hatch. And you know what? We will feed them with baby brine shrimp. Look at the size of the fry against that baby brine shrimp. Today is day eight from breeding and our fries are four days old from hatch. I'm going to transfer all of the fries to a round basin. If we don't transfer them to a round basin, when we feed them with BBS, the BBS tends to go to the corner of the rectangular tank and some fries will starve to death because they didn't see the BBS in front of them. There is no hiding place for the BBS in this round basin which will ensure all fries will get to eat. I'm adding live plants to give more oxygen and eat some of the ammonia in the water. It's day nine. Look how fast they grow. Just yesterday they were small and today look how big they are. They're big. Their food wastes are also big. We need some help in cleaning those leftover food. The more leftover food you have, the more ammonia will be. So I'm adding these apple snails to help eat leftover food and lessen the risk of ammonia spike, which can kill our fries. Start working, fellas. They're eating all the dead baby brine shrimp or BBS. After one hour, all those dead BBS, which can potentially cause ammonia spike, return to snail poop. See these small black poops on the floor? They're now easy to siphon using a turkey baster. Now we add back the plants and some aged water. We do this every day until they're bigger. And while they grow, we add more water in the tank. 